Chrysler 300C Review Remember the ill-fated merger of equals between Daimler and Chrysler in the late 1990s? In the end it was a merger of disaster and broke down a decade later, but you're looking at what is one of the few success stories to come from it. At the turn of the millennium, Chrysler's U.S. specific entrance in the large executive sector were dreadful front-driven sputters like the Concorde and 300M. Chrysler engineers, though, speak fondly of traveling to Germany and having access at that time to the latest Mercedes technology and architecture. The result was the 300C, which turned up at the New York Motor Show in 2003, before going on sale in the US in 2004 and then in the UK at the turn of 2005. Sharing some mechanical components with Mercedes contemporary W211 E-Class. It's a car that has brought Chrysler considerable success over the past decade. It did quite well in pre-financial crisis Britain, plying Yankee charm and plenty of space for the money. And now we have a replacement that, in its styling, has had the Audi DT treatment, it's modernized and updated but is clearly a continuation of Chrysler's best recent model. The mostly new 300C is still badged as a Chrysler in the UK and the US and most other markets, but has become the launch of Thema throughout most of mainland Europe. Whatever the badge, though, the question remains, is it any good? The 300C doesn't exactly represent the state of the executive car art as far as its construction or power reign is concerned but, positioned like it is, few would expect it to. In a segment where aluminium is commonly used to save weight and boost rigidity, its underbody is made almost exclusively of steel of varying tensile strengths and thicknesses, with nylon polymer reinforcements in places. Gains in structural stiffness are claimed, but the car isn't light, 2,040 kg with a full tank of fuel. The last V6 engine mid-sized exec we tested, the Lexus GS250, was just under 1,700 kg.